It's painted. It's painted. These are also painted. So, again, we are chasing the truck. The deadline is Players Classic this year. Uh, that's in about 15 days, which is not a lot of time considering I'm going to Poland at the same time. Um, yeah. We've got it into paint. Now, there's a couple of bits I've finished up off camera, which you didn't see, which I'll show you now. Cover plate there, a cover plate there. That's all good. Um, just tidies everything up. And uh, I can still get to all the bolts for the steering box as well. Uh, yeah, obviously I Gravitex the whole lot. I did the bulkhead very quickly. Um, there's gonna be a panel that comes up to, well, here. And uh, that will come down there. So you're not even gonna see most of that anyway, but I painted it while it was out. I also moved the brake tabs from down here to up here. And obviously before I painted it, I did actually get on my back and lay and weld everything on the bottom side as well. As annoying as that was, um, I got really burnt, etc. But it's done. So yeah, the plan today is to try and get as much as this back together as we can so I can get it rolling and get it back on the ramp because I want to do that gearbox cross member with the engine in so I can see how high it needs to go. I want to raise the engine as little as possible if I have to. Um, if not, I'll just raise the gearbox. So that's that. I'll show you it once it's all together or I could just do the magic. Just like that. Yeah, so that is all together now. Now that is, uh, it's gone together really nicely. I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. It looks really nice. Everything's new, everything's painted, all new bolts. You get the gist, it looks really good and it all works now. I did put the anti-roll bar on. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it on there because I jacked the wheel up and it felt like it was binding. Obviously I didn't do the other side. I didn't jack the other side up at the same time. Um, I'll leave it on there for now. If it, if I can get both wheels on and put it on the ground and it lays flat, then I'll keep it on because uh, I imagine a, a, a truck like this usually is going to want an anti-roll bar. I've seen it where people have no anti-roll bar. You drive around the corner and the whole truck literally like falls over even if you're doing like 15 mile an hour. So it's like it's pretty important in this situation. On air ride applications, I'd always say try and keep the anti-roll bar if you can, but if it is binding and getting in the way, then obviously get rid of it. Next problem, these discs don't have the same studs as the original drums did, so the studs on here are completely different and they're not UK, so they're US specific. I think they're 9 sixteenths, um, which is annoying to get in the UK. So I'm searching around to get that because now obviously I can't put the wheels on and put it on the floor until I've got those wheel nuts. Everything else is there. Um, yeah, I started doing this video and I wasn't sure if I was gonna film anything. It was just me crawling around on the floor all day, piecing this together, which was uh, boring to watch. So I think the next clip you're gonna see is me just doing a couple of little bits and bobs. We've got weird brake lines to try and figure out and find new, uh, replacement fittings and stuff like that because again it's just a pain in the ass because it's all American stuff and I can't just make a generic brake line like I normally would so it's just getting all those little tiny little bits is just a pain in the ass. If I was in the UK or if it was in the US I could literally just go into a corner shop and buy all of this stuff apparently it's absolutely ridiculous you can buy absolutely everything from absolutely everywhere so having something like this over there would be super easy, but not here because we are not American. 
Um, yeah, I think the next couple of clips will be filmed tomorrow, the next day or the weekend. And uh, I'll be putting the engine in and that'll be in this video. So... It's time to get the engine in. Now, this is gonna be quite awkward to get in. I've gotta basically get it up and over the subframe and in. I don't have an engine leveler. And I'm doing this on my own, so this can only go semi-okay. But we'll show you. It's in, it's in. So that took me over an hour to get it into the position that it's in now. Uh, it actually took so long on my own. Um, perks of working on my own, I guess. But I can show you what the first initial problem is, uh, which can be resolved quite easily. The link bar for the steering, I don't know if I can actually get that on picture. It's touching the front pulley. So I just need to raise the engine up 30 mil. 30 mil will probably do it just fine. We've got to make sure everything around it is not going to hit. Uh, the distributor cap is obviously very close to the bulkhead. Um, if it gets too close that we can't do anything about it, obviously I have a hammer so I can just massage that back in there. But um, yeah, everything else seems to be okay. The sump is probably level with the chassis rail, so we need everything to be as low or higher than that chassis rail there. Uh, obviously the gearbox and gearbox cradle hang too far down, so we've got to get that. Once on the ramp, I could do that, but engine looks all right. So just a small raise on the engine, clear the pulley, and then we're good to go, I do believe. Right, so we're getting somewhere now. I've actually got the engine in a position and the gearbox in a position where they're gonna sit once all is said and done. So as you saw, I think in the last clip, the uh, steering arm was actually touching the bottom pulley. Uh, and as you can see now, we're just clear, we're just clear. So what I've done, uh, you might be able to see, there's some spaces there and spaces under the engine mount all the way around. So that's raised the engine up 30 mil and the next call of action would be to raise the gearbox because the gearbox hangs really low. As you can see, it's quite high up in there. Uh, I'm not actually sure how high that actually is, but the props all connected up. Um, I think we're gonna have to cut around here to get the shifter to fit, uh, which is annoying, but I'll show you what I've come up with. So if you come down here, it's quite simple really, we've got a jack, a big bit of box section, and that's pushing up on the bottom of the gearbox. That's flat with the chassis rails, and then if you come down to here, that is, well, it's on the floor. What you can't really see is, there is a bow in that bar, uh, all the way out, so that gap there, what's that, like one and a half mil? Obviously that won't be there because there is a, a slight bow in there where I'm pushing the jack up, but that works. That's exactly where the box wants to be. You can see that's probably quite a big uh, lift on there. Uh, that's how high the gearbox cross member needs to be. So obviously when uh, I've got the rest of it situated, I can get the truck on the ramp and then I can make that front cross member like flat or flush, should I say. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully that's clear. So yeah, that's where that's all situated. That's all looking good from this angle. Uh, we've just clear on the dizzy cap right at the back, which is good. I think I've got everything wired up, really. There was all these extra wires that were just in the engine bay, not connected to anything before I started. Uh, so I'm just sorting out some of the wiring now and plugging everything in, but yeah, getting somewhere. Most of this wiring and stuff clips to the front wheel tubs on the front, so I can't connect most of it at the minute. I'd honestly love to be able to undo all of this wiring and, you know, start again with it because it's not very nice, but 
I don't do wiring and it, it does work. The only thing I've got to figure out is where the temperature sender wire went to because it's pulled out of this connector. But there is also a lot of wires that were never connected anyway. So I'll go back through some pictures and I'll figure that out. All right, I think it can start now. Everything's all hooked up. Apart from that temperature sensor, which I won't know until I start putting it into things that, you know, make it work. Uh, there's a cylinder head temperature sensor. Obviously I taped them all up, but it's pulled out somewhere, which is annoying. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it should fire up now. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll give it a go. I'll put the battery on, obviously, in the battery tray. Let me just hook up the uh, accelerator pedal. There you go, it should start now. Get it to start like this. Oh, the accelerator pedal came off. Let me just connect this properly. I don't know how it was connected. Can't remember. But I'll figure it out. Was it like that? Was it like that? I think it was like that. All right, let me see if it starts. I'll give it some fuel, some everything. It should start. This starts with a weird pump. I've got no spark now. can smell fuel really strongly, but I don't know why. It's not firing, I've got no spark now. Cool, yeah, lots of fuel in there. It runs. It's just thrown oil all over my fucking ankle. For context on that, I knew the top of the gearbox was off. What I assumed is that it wouldn't throw, I don't know why, but I assumed it wouldn't throw gearbox oil all up my leg and my leg only because I looked inside and there's pretty much no oil anywhere apart from my fucking ankle. Must have just gone into my ankle because there's nothing really anywhere good boys tune in next time and also the reason it would start is this coil wire which i've labeled there's two terminals for that to go on in there and i had it on that one instead of that one and that was all it took to fire straight into life next thing is to get everything pieced back together radiator on, everything else buttoned up, and uh, get this thing on the road. But obviously, I need to go home now and change, I'll put my shoe in the wash at least, because fucking hell, it's gonna stink otherwise. Thanks for watching, goodbye. <laughs>